Hello friends, in today's case based discussion, I will be talking about the issue of fibular shortening or you can say lateral malar shortening in bimalar fractures or trimalar fractures. The issue of correct fibular length restoration has always been there in such injuries, often because of the fracture pattern and sometimes because of the combination. So we'll be seeing such a case in which the problem has occurred and how that has been corrected will be shown in subsequent slides. So let's start. So what is the case? So in this lateral view or you can say it's kind of lateral oblique view, we see there is oblique fracture of the lateral malus. There is some combination in the proximal part. There is a kind of transverse fracture of the medial malus and there is a posterior malar fragment as seen in this lateral view. So this is a trimalar fracture in a simple language. But if we give a technical classification that will be according to Lodge Hansen classification and this will be supination external rotation injury type 4. Why? Because there is a transverse fracture of medial malus and the fracture of the lateral malus is quite low and oblique in nature. And the oblique fracture enters in the antero inferior part of the lateral malus then goes proximally. And there is a fracture of the posterior malus or you can say Folkman fragment as well. So this is a kind of injury of supination external rotation type 4. So if we want to go for a detailed planning, we need a CT also. In this axial cut, we see there is a posterior malus fracture. There is medial malar fracture line. And you see the syndesmosis part is maintained. And in this corner cut also, we see there is a medial malar fracture. There is fracture of the lateral malus, which is oblique in nature. There is a small fragment lying here which probably represents the combination in the lower part here and there is a combination in the top part also and this is the fracture of the Folkman fragment or you can say the posterior malus. It is not much displaced but definitely there is some combination here. In 3D cuts also we see the same kind of picture. There is some combination in the lower part. There is a long oblique fracture with combination proximally as well. There is a medial malar fracture which is transverse in nature and there is a posterior malar fracture or you can call it Folkman fragment. And you see the spike of the lateral malar fracture, it is also combinated. Now one problem has occurred. The patient has visited the OPD after 4 weeks of injury. We see the displacement has increased. The shortening which was not much here has definitely increased as we see there is overriding of the fracture. There was combination here which is now probably getting replaced by the callus formation. Here also we see some callus formation has started and the medial malus fracture is grossly displaced now. Whole of the talus has now shifted laterally because of this unstable fracture pattern. So how did we proceed? So what we did, we reduced the posterior malus fracture first under direct vision through the posterolateral approach to the ankle and after reduction of it we placed a buttress plate over the posterior malus and once that was done we shifted the focus to the fibula. The surgeon has reduced the fibula and put a lateral locking plate over the fibula and the medial malus has been addressed after achieving compression and placement of positional screws. Here he has not used the leg screws he has reduced it and placed positional screws. What about the post operative radiograph? You see this is the post operative radiograph AP view and this is the lateral view. While the fracture fixation appears to be satisfactory, we are not happy with this part. You see there is increased space, there is increased space between the lateral malus and the talus. And also the length of the lateral malus has been reduced. It is almost at the level of the medial malus tip. So definitely there is some shortening. But according to the surgeon, the fracture was satisfactorily reduced. He had reduced the fracture and tried to match the surface of the distal fragment and the proximal fragment. Then why the problem has occurred? Then a CT was ordered because CT is the best thing to assess the malreduction. But in this coronal cut, there is no gross malreduction. Only thing that we are able to see is some combination here. And in other cuts also, there is no gross malreduction but the shortening is still there. You see the space is definitely increased on this side and in this cut also there is some combination in the lower part and in this 3D cut also you see the plate position appears to be satisfactory. The surface appears to be somewhat satisfactorily reduced but there is some combination here in the terminal part of the fracture spike. So why the fibula has malreduced or shortened without showing much evidence in CT? Because there was combination in the proximal part and there is some combination in the distal part also which we have seen here. So combination actually invites the shortening and the fracture pattern which is a long oblique one is definitely an unstable fracture pattern which will have tendency to go into shortening. So this can be cleared with this small diagram. You see this is fibula. This is the terminal fracture part having a long oblique fracture. 
now if there is some combination in this part and in this part then definitely there is going to be some overriding like this and if there is some combination in proximally and distally definitely we are going to miss the reduction in these parts and therefore the shortening will have tendency to get missed so we have to focus on these two parts whenever addressing the lateral malleus that's why in the previous picture we had seen there was small fragment here which was representing the combination in this part that's why the shortening got missed here also in 3d cut there was some combination here so what we did so obviously we removed the fibular plate first then then we placed a joystick wire in the distal fragment then tried to gain length since i've told you the combination in this part can result in mismatch of the surfaces Therefore, the critical part in this fixture was to expose this area. Often this part is covered with soft tissue and ligamentous attachments. Therefore, we don't visualize this part. But in such fractures, which have tendency of shortening or migrating upwards because of the unstable fracture pattern, we should expose this part. And we did the same in this case. We exposed this terminal part and we see there is a small void here because of the combination. And we saw in the previous CT, the small fragment that was missing from here is actually lying somewhere else. Now under direct vision, we are able to reduce the fibula and matching the surfaces. So exposure of this part is critical because only then we'll be able to see whether the remaining part of the terminal fragment is matching this part or not. So we have to avoid this kind of picture which can happen if we don't visualize this part. So always try to visualize this part whenever you are reducing the long oblique fracture of the lateral mills. But when we were trying to gain length, still we saw that some space was still there and we were not sure why it was happening. So what we did, we checked the opposite ankle fluoroscopic view intraoperatively. Then this space appeared to be normal. That's why it's important to see the other ankle also because there is huge variation in this alignment between talus and the lateral malleus. And if we miss the opposite ankle radiograph, we are definitely going to struggle to reduce the fibula at a lower level, which is probably not needed when the anatomical variation is like this. Now we are satisfied that the alignment is correct com after comparing with the opposite ankle. But the surgeon can't hold the wire for so long because he has to place a plate also over this surface. So what we can do, we transfixed this wire from the fibula to the talus. Now since the talus cannot migrate upwards, it is going to hold the fibula length at this particular level. Now you are free to pass your plate over the lateral surface. And the same thing was done. The oblique fracture was reduced with leg screws. Then a neutralization plate over the lateral surface was placed. And this was the final reduction. So earlier the post-operative radiograph was like this. There was a definite evidence of shortening. And this was the post-operative radiograph after revising. You see, the terminal part of the lateral malleus is now at a lower level compared to the medium malleus, which was missing in the previous surgery. So in follow-up, the healing occurred satisfactorily and the fibular length was maintained throughout and the patient had gained good function of the ankle. So there are some take-home messages of this case-based discussion. First of all, the oblique fracture pattern definitely is an unstable fracture pattern, especially the long oblique one and those which are exiting at a higher level. So in such scenario, we have to be cautious to avoid shortening. And the shortening risk increases with combination, especially when there is proximal as well as distal combination. And late presentation often makes things difficult. So you have to be careful. You have to distract the distal fragment. Then only you'll be able to reduce it to a proper length. And definitely a K-wire joystick can be helpful. You can use that K-wire to place the wire into the distal fragment and then transfix it to the talus. Opposite ankle radiograph is mandatory whenever you are addressing the shortening because that will act as a standard to which the proper length of the distal fibula needs to be restored. So I hope you have a good learning through this case-based discussion. Thank you.